Hello and welcome to another episode of Piano TV. Today we're going to delve into the history, the life and times of Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, who was one of the craziest, most, you know, well-known composers of the classical era. Since in the last video we learned a piece by Mozart, I thought it was only fitting that we delve a little bit deeper into this guy's personal life, which is what I call a good time. So let's get started. <laughs> Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, who we will henceforth refer to as Wolfgang on first name basis because we're really tight that way, was born in 1756 in Salzburg, which is now modern day Austria. Mozart, or Wolfgang, was one of three key composers of the classical era who contributed greatly to the genre as well as to music as we know it today. So we've got Mozart, we've got Beethoven, and we've got Haydn. Those are the three classical era composers who completely changed everything. Wolfgang's dad, Leopold, is the main reason that Mozart got into music in the first place. Leopold wasn't a famous musician or anything, but he was a teacher and a composer and a pretty good violin player. He even wrote a book on the violin. So in Wolfgang's case, if you consider the nature nurture argument, for him, it was probably a little bit of both because he did grow up in a musical family. Mozart had just one sibling that survived beyond infancy because back then times were kind of rough. And her name was Maria Anna Mozart, also nicknamed Nannerl for some reason, probably because her mom's name was Anna Maria and her name was Maria Anna and it just got kind of confusing. So anyway, Nannerl was four years older than Mozart. So when she was seven, she got to take keyboard lessons from their dad, Leopold. And that was all cool. And little baby Wolfgang was like three, year old, three years old. He was super into it. He would just like sit at the piano and watch her play with rapt attention. And he wasn't one of those annoying three-year-olds that just like mashed on the keys and made gurgling noises and stuff. He was, he would sit at the keyboard and make really pleasant sounds and be really happy about it. He was like a good kid, right? And so finally Leopold's like, well, even though you're basically still a baby, I guess I'll teach you piano anyway, because you seem to be pretty into it. So little baby Mozart started taking lessons with his dad. And when he was five year old, he was even composing pieces which were written down by his dad. And Leopold might have made some creative embellishments because it's, you know, a five-year-old writing music, but still give Wolfgang some credit. That's awesome. So if you're Leopold and you've got these two kids who are super talented at the keyboard, wouldn't you want to tour them around Europe to get some dollar bills and fame? He sure did. And that's what happened. When Wolfgang was six and Nanaro was 10, they went on a European tour that lasted three and a half years. And they went to places as awesome as London and Paris and Munich. They went to a whole bunch of places. So on the one hand, this long tour was really good for little Wolfgang because it exposed him to composers that influenced him. It exposed him to different genres and styles of music and just inevitably expanded his horizons as traveling to a bunch of different places does to everybody. He also wrote his first symphony before the age of 10 while he was on tour, so that's pretty cool too. But on the other hand, all of this crazy travel had the downside of almost killing Nanaro, Wolfgang, and their dad Leopold because, you know, you couldn't just hop a tour bus and live the life. Traveling was really rough back then without the advent of modern medicine. After the first European tour, Leopold and Wolfgang went off on their own second tour, dumping poor little Nanaro at home with their mom, probably because she was no longer young enough to tout as a child prodigy. But anyway, at this point, young Wolfgang was actually a teenager and he was so hardcore that he pirated music, which I know doesn't sound like a big deal in this day and age where you just click a button. But here's what happened. He went to a performance to see a piece called Miserere performed. It's like a, a vocal work. So this is no, you know, simple pop song with like one melody line and, you know, catchy chords and everything. This is a 13 long piece with four vocals. It's really you know, complex. And what he did is he heard it twice and he wrote it all down from memory. So if that is not hardcore, I don't know what is. And it was on the second tour that Mozart started getting into opera as well, which would end up being one of his life passions. So yay. So Wolfgang finally returned home from all the touring. And at this point he decides, okay, I gotta get a, get me a real job. So he ended up working for the Archbishop, Prince of the Prince Archbishop of Salzburg, which is his hometown. And that's where he had a bunch of friends and admirers. So things were pretty good. He got to write a bunch of different genres. He wrote symphonies, he wrote sonatas, string quartets, concertos, you name it. He probably did it at that time, except opera, but we'll get to that. So life was pretty good for him. 
But, as many 20-year-olds tend to be, Wolfgang was restless. His yearly salary was 150 florins, which roughly, really roughly translates to about $3,000 a year. And things were cheaper back then, but still, at this point Wolfgang was like, you know what, I'm actually pretty awesome, and I, I think I deserve better than this. And he was also really starting to come into the fact that his true passion was opera. He loved opera, and if you lived in Salzburg and you loved opera, things weren't really that good, because one of their major theaters for opera just closed, and he didn't really have the right opportunities at home. So 21-year-old Wolfgang went on a long, actual physical journey to find employment. He did lots of things. He made lots of friends. He fell in love with the girl. But he didn't actually find any jobs that he wanted in the entire time he was traveling for them. He found opportunities. Like, for example, he could have been an organist. But he was kind of like, eh, I don't really want to be an organist. That's not a high enough caliber job for this guy. So he ended up getting pretty broke. And he had to sell his things because he was broke. And at this time, his mom died from being ill. Probably because the family couldn't afford it doctor, so times were tough for the Mozart family. Leopold was doing what all fathers of unemployed 20-somethings do, and that was try to get him a job. He did end up finding Wolfgang a job in his hometown of Salzburg that paid 450 florins a year, so score, right? Well, Wolfgang did end up taking the job, but let's just say it was probably not his first choice, it was probably a last-ditch effort because he was experiencing so much failure. In Paris, he was staying with a friend who kicked him out, so that was unfortunate. He reunited with the girl he originally fell in love with, but this time around she coldly rejected him, so that was unfortunate. He also never found a job that he actually wanted, so that was unfortunate. So he did end up going back to his hometown in Salzburg to take the position, even though he really didn't want to. At this point, Wolfgang was probably thinking to himself, man, my life sucks. So I guess I just gotta, like, you know, live a normal life and get a real job and stop chasing my crazy, crazy dreams. But Wolfgang was still doing lots of writing, and when he was 24, he premiered his opera Idomeneo in Munich, which received really good reviews, so he was like, yay, my opera did well. And at this point, his employer, the Archbishop Colorido, was in Venice, and he summoned Mozart to Venice, and that's when things started really going sour between the two of them. I mean, he was already not too happy with his job, but things started getting a lot worse during this trip. So the first bad thing that happened is, okay, so Wolfgang's like, I just premiered this opera, I'm pretty cool. but. The Archbishop basically treated him like a servant, which really ground his gears. And what further ground his gears is that he op had an opportunity to perform for the Emperor for 200 florins for one performance, but his employer didn't let him. And that sucked. And then another thing that really ground his gears is that Mozart actually tried to quit, but they didn't let him quit. So he's not having a good time right now. And it was even worse because his dad, Leopold, sided with the Archbishop. And he was like, hey, son, just you're being a fool. You're being, you're being stupid. Just make up with the Archbishop and come back home. Resume your job. Resume your normal life. Just, like, settle down. And Wolfgang didn't want to settle down. He wanted to quit his job. He hated the tyranny of it all. So a month later, he was actually allowed to quit. And he was dismissed with a literal kick to his, pardon my French, ass. He was kicked in the ass. That's how he was dismissed from his post. And at that point, Wolfgang was like, you know what? I am so done with the system. I am going to be my own free man. I'm going to be a freelancer and I'm not going to be the employee of anyone. This is, I've had enough. And that's when he set up shop in Vienna. Quitting his job and being a freelancer in Vienna ended up being one of Wolfgang's really good decisions. It worked out really well for him. He gained a reputation as a great keyboardist and a great composer in Vienna, and he started doing well for himself, making real money. Of course, this story wouldn't be complete without some personal drama. So you remember the girl he fell in love with originally? Um, her name was Aloysa Weber, all right? And at this time in Venice, Mozart, was living with the Weber family. Yes, he was living with the family of his ex-unrequited love, who was now married, shall I say. So they just needed an extra tenant to pay the bills, which is why he was there. But you gotta imagine the situation was kind of awkward. And it was probably even more awkward when he decided to go for Aloysia's sister, Constance. So you can imagine what that would have been like, Wolfgang's all like, hey, hey, Constance, you, you were my first choice, but you still cool if we still cool if we hook up? And I guess she was cool with it because because they ended up getting married and having six kids, two of whom sur survived infancy. 
So there you go, I guess, a true love story. So let's just pause the story for a minute to talk about Wolfgang's personality and just basically talk about what made him a regular guy as opposed to this like crazy exalted god of music. Now, as far as his personality goes, I mean, he liked to play pool, he liked to dance, he had a pet dog and he had a pet bird and he had a horse that he rode sometimes. So he just did normal stuff. And in terms of his sense of humor, he did have one and it is described as scatological humor, which is basically just a fancy term for toilet humor, aka fart jokes. So Mozart was just a regular guy. He even wrote scatological music for his friends to sing probably when they were drinking. So that's kind of funny. So Mozart had his human side too. In 1784, when Wolfgang was 28 years old, he met up with one of his contemporaries, Franz Joseph Haydn, and they ended up becoming really good friends. They did impromptu string quartets together when Haydn happened to be in Wolfgang's neck of the woods. They dedicated songs to each other and just became really good friends. And in a letter that Haydn wrote to Leopold, Mozart's dad, he said, and I quote, I tell you before God, and as an honest man, your son is the greatest composer known to me by person and repute. He has taste, and what is more, the greatest skill in composition. So those are very nice words coming from the esteemed Joseph Haydn. When Wolfgang was around age 30, he got back into opera in a really big way and wrote two of his most famous operatic masterpieces that we still know and love today. He wrote The Marriage of Figaro, and he wrote Don Giovanni. At this point, Wolfgang was doing really well for himself, what with the constant performing and fame. So him and his wife Constance were seriously living in style. The rent of their apartment at the time was 460 florins a year. He, he was able to afford a 900 florin piano, a 300 florin billiard table, and he could send he could afford to send one of his kids to a fancy boarding school. So they were seriously living it up. Of course, as is often the case with excessive celebrity wealth, it didn't last. And for Wolfgang's family, it was no exception. Times did get tough for them and they didn't do a very good job of saving anything at all. They just kind of spent all their money. Luckily, Wolfgang had a position, a part-time position as a chamber composer. So that helped keep them afloat when things got a lot harder. As a side note, Beethoven apparently traveled to Vienna in 1787, probably to meet up with Wolfgang because Beethoven at the time was 17 and probably just really wanted to meet one of his awesome idols. However, there are no surviving records of if they actually did ever end up meeting up. So that whole experience is a big question mark. It's just a fun fact. So anyway, times were tough for Wolfgang and Constance at this point. He was performing less and there was a problem with there being an Austro Turkish war, which kind of had effect on the economy and made people feel less spendy. So it was 1790 and Wolfgang was like, okay, you know what? Maybe if I go on a little mini tour, I'll be able to pull in some money and then that'll help. But it didn't really work. So he had to start borrowing money from friends because apparently he couldn't downsize his lifestyle and live in like a crappy apartment or something. And he, yeah, so he went in debt and that was not awesome. By 1791, when Wolfgang was 35 years old, it's like his life light bulb went back on and he was re-inspired and he seemed to work through his depression and he started producing more works again. He This is the time where he wrote his famous opera, The Magic Flute, among other compositions. He became super productive and he started earning more money again so he was able to pay off his debt. Things were looking up for Wolfgang. He, he was living the life again. That is, things were looking up for Wolfgang until he died. Yeah, he died in 1791 at the very end of the year after being sick for a few months and bedridden for basically a month and a half to two months. And no one really knows why he died. There are tons of theories that just can't be confirmed. Everything from rheumatic fever to influenza to mercury poisoning, it, it, it sucks. I mean, he was, at, he was at his prime. He was on an upswing and he was only 35 years old when he died. So just imagine what incredible compositions could have been had he lived a little bit longer. But then I guess if there's a plus side to everything, it's probably better to die when you're on an upswing in life instead of like down in the dumps and super depressed. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just saying it, it sucked though. He shouldn't have died at 35. <sighs> Another thing that tends to happen to celebrities is that they tend to become more famous once they're dead, which is really too bad, but that's what happened with Wolfgang and it's happened to tons of people since. So he's probably one of the only composers that people could think of by name when they're thinking about classical music. So he really left an impression and influenced 
tons of composers after him. He has quite the legacy. And in another video, we'll go into depth into the music of Mozart as opposed to just his life. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you had as much fun with it as I did because I am so all over this history stuff. It's fun, super fun, super interesting. Anyway, if you want to keep up to date with videos, subscribe to this channel and check out the website pianotv.net and leave a comment below telling me your thoughts, what you think, anything, anything. Thanks for watching. See you later. I just bipped out. <laughs> okay, I'm actually testing the angle, but now I'm a little... Whew.